Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this very special recipe, I'll show you another one of our customers' favourites. And it's this fantastic fish in an irresistible crispy butter and our wonderful homemade chip or fries recipe. And I'll also be giving up a couple of our well-guarded trade secrets. And fish and chips in the UK is great any day of the year. But as Good Friday is just around the corner, it's a great time to get in some practice for that big fish day on the calendar. You can check out the full written recipe on the channel's website, so see the link in the description box below the video. Right, let's get straight into today's delicious fish and chip recipe. And this is the beautiful cod fillets I'll be using. This recipe is for two, but I'll only be showing one in the video. Our first secret or top tip is in the preparation of the fish. To get the best possible results in taste and texture of your fish, it's important to prepare your fish properly. Place the fish on kitchen paper in a small tray. And you need to salt both sides of the fish. This not only seasons the fish, it helps draw out any excess moisture in the fish before frying. Once salted, lay another piece of kitchen paper on top and refrigerate for one to two hours. And that takes care of your fish preparation. On to making the chips or fries. Now I'll be calling them chips for the rest of the video because that's what we call them here in the UK. A quick word on the potatoes to use. If you're in the UK, I recommend Morris Piper. If you can't get those, King Edward's is a good substitute. And in the USA, I believe Idaho or russet potatoes are the best to use for chips. But wherever you are, there's loads of websites you can look at for advice on the best potatoes to use for chips. Once you have them peeled, cut the chips as shown. I'll leave it up to you how big or how small you want yours. Health-wise, fat chips are better for you, as they have less surface area when frying. And for the sake of this video, mine are around half an inch, about 13 millimetres. Once you have your chips cut, get them completely submerged in cold water until needed. And now I'm going to give up our company's wonderful golden brown crispy bubbly butter recipe. Start by adding the plain flour to a strainer over a bowl. Now add the corn flour. You may know that as corn starch. And the next dry ingredient to go in is another one of our company's top tips. And that's the turmeric. Not only does this add great flavour, but the main reason, it really helps maintain that light golden brown colour in the batter all through the cooking process. The final dry ingredient to go in is a teaspoon of baking powder. And this makes the butter bubbly and light. If you're in the UK and you prefer to use self-raising flour instead of plain flour, just leave out the baking powder. OK, push that lot through the strainer. For the liquid in the butter, you're going to have to use something carbonated, like soda water or beer. Sometimes I like to use this non-alcoholic lager. It gives the butter a mild beer taste. But for this one in the video, I'm just going to use this homemade soda or sparkling water. But whatever you use, it must be ice cold. I already have the correct amount measured off in a glass. Try to use your digital scales when measuring your water, guys. It's much more accurate. Now using a spatula, gently mix that together. Don't whisk it as you'll lose most of the gas if you whisk. One other point, don't add salt to the butter. That will definitely force out the gas from the water or the lager. And that's your butter made. Now set that aside for now. For frying the chips in, I'm having to use my electric fryer. I would normally have used my chip pan on the stove top, next to the wok that I'll be frying the fish in. But because of the limited space with all the cameras there, I'm having to use the electric fryer instead. Drain the water off the chips and dry them on a clean towel. Then get them into your basket. Whatever you're cooking yours in, make sure the oil is around 140 Celsius. That's 285 Fahrenheit. I'll be doing what's known as double frying these chips. First slowly, then raising the temperature later at the end. Now lower the basket into the oil. Wait a moment until it starts bubbling. Now let these cook slowly for around 10 minutes for the first fry. Meanwhile, I'm getting the fish oil in my wok up to temperature, which is 180 Celsius. That's 355 Fahrenheit. 
And FYI, I'm using sunflower oil for both chips and fish. Next, get your fish from the fridge. It should feel quite dry by now. And coat the whole fish fillet in the seasoned flour on the plate. Brush off any excess flour and totally submerge the fish in the butter. Now using a fork, gently lower the fish into the hot oil. It should sink to the bottom at first, then quickly float to the top. After a moment, turn the fish over. If you see any gaps in the butter, don't be afraid to spoon a little more butter into those holes as shown. If you didn't plug those holes up, the moisture would leak out from the fish. Now let that fry for around 10 minutes, turning at regular intervals. And while that fish is frying, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also book four in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. The skeleton style oven gloves, now supporting our company name, are also available too. Just check out the link in the description box to our website store if you're interested in any of these items. Back to the chips, and that's the 10 minutes up on those. So lift them out of the oil for now, and increase the temperature to 150 degrees Celsius, that's 300 Fahrenheit. Now leave that to get up to the new temperature. And a very quick mention to the channel's Patreon members and supporters, I'll be giving the latest list a shout out a little later in the video. And now back to the fish. And that's been frying now for 8 minutes, so before taking it out, drizzle some of that lovely butter into the oil and let it fry and crisp up for the last 2 minutes. This is common in our UK fish and chip shops to order some extra butter pieces. These have different names across the UK. In the North East where I live, they're simply called extra butter bits. In Yorkshire, they're known as scraps or scrags. Whatever you call them, they are absolutely delicious. OK, once the new temperature is reached, lower the chips back into the oil to colour and crisp up. This should only take about two minutes. In the meantime, I'll get the fish out and onto some kitchen paper to remove some of that oil. Next, I'll get those butter bits out and onto some kitchen paper too. Same with the chips, and they're looking fantastic. Crisp, light and golden brown. And I'll get them straight onto the serving plate. Another tip, always heat your plates up. Never serve a hot meal on a cold plate. And that's a freebie for the cook. Now add the fish to the chips. Peas always go well with fish and chips. Now these are garden peas, but processed and mushy peas are fine too. Now I'll add those fabulous butter bits. Salt and malt vinegar is normally added to fish and chips in the UK, but I prefer a squeeze of lemon juice with mine. And just listen to how crispy that butter is. The fish inside is moist, flaky and brilliant white. And here I go. That butter is so crisp and light and the fish is absolutely delicious and well seasoned from that preparation I did earlier.
and those chips are crisp on the outside and soft, light and fluffy on the inside. Perfect. I've got to try another piece of that fish. It's absolutely delicious. Got to try a piece of that crunchy butter too. <laughs> Just listen to that crunch. And there you go everyone, an absolutely delicious meal for the upcoming Good Friday Easter holidays. Or like I said earlier, any day of the year. Get your ingredients, measurements and timing right. And there's nothing too difficult at all about making the best homemade fish and chips you'll ever taste. A big, big thumbs up for this one guys. And as promised a little earlier in the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You Button supporters. And they are Dan Calgero, Alice Heppel, De Fillard, Barbie Harmon, Spooner, Frank Sergio, Vicky Charon, Elaine, Richard, Jens K3250, Kevin Elskin, 4275, Darylda, 1352, Morzovi, AED, and finally, Gloria Ching, 6720. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.